I need to sneeze. As we grow up, we learn right from wrong. We learn it through praise and discipline. If we do something wrong, we're told off. If we do something right, we're praised and everyone celebrates and it's great, especially if it's a rarity, in my case. <laughs> we learn when we're children, especially if you've got a sibling, that life doesn't revolve around us. We learn that there's two or three or four or eight of us that our parents are bringing up and we learn that life simply does not revolve around us. And that is an incredibly valuable lesson to learn. Obviously, I'm talking very generally. Not everyone is fortunate enough to have that stable upbringing, but generally speaking, that is how we learn. As we get into our teen years, that warps a bit, and I think suddenly, again, we think we are the centre of the universe. Everything revolves around us. We start listening to Green Day and put on really heavy black eyeliner, shave the side of our head, and just have a bit of a crisis. That might have just been me. The point is, we learn and we change throughout our childhood and our teen years. We learn a lot in a relatively short period of time about life and how it works. I know in my life, I haven't treated people in the best way I could have done. I'm not proud to look back at the person I was and who I used to be. I certainly wouldn't treat people like that now, but why is that? What happened? I've asked myself that question so many times and I've sort of come to a little bit of a conclusion. I was using my trauma, my stress, my mental health as an excuse. So if I snapped, if I was impatient or anxious, I was using that as an excuse for the way I treated people. If I was argumentative or snappy or just not being very nice, it was because I was going through something and that's okay, that's an excuse. Along with this, I allowed people to revolve around me. I think when something happens, rightly so, People club together to look after the person it's happening to. So grief is a good example. When somebody loses someone close to them, their network looks after them. That might come in lots of hugs, or that might come in making them tea, or even cooking for them, helping them clean the house when it's initially happened. And I think that's great. People need that support when the grief hits initially. And even throughout, people need each other there to chat and talk things through. But I definitely think I allowed my people and my network to revolve around me for a time, and that's not fair. Other people are going through things too, even if you're going through something that you perceive to be particularly difficult. I think to some extent it was valid when I was using certain things as excuses, like trauma and mental health and stress. I think it's valid. At certain points, it's okay. We're all gonna get stressed and we are all going to snap and be bitey. Also, if you have a period, that is gonna come into it too. Trust me. Everybody that knows me very well is thinking, yeah, you should see her on her time of the month. But I think those excuses can only last so long. We do need to build up a resilience with ourselves and learn that we're not necessarily always victims and we can come through something. Yes, grief, trauma, mental health can change us and shape us. And I'm not saying this is always the case. Sometimes there needs to be medical intervention, um, psychological intervention and things like that to get us through. But sometimes we need to reframe it and realize we're not always the victims and we can't keep using certain things as excuses for behavior that is becoming the norm. I realized about a year ago, I want to be a nice person. I want to be patient and understandable. I have gone through some things that plenty of people have probably also gone through. And instead of making me a good person, I feel like I was becoming somebody who was completely overrun by these experiences. I've come to the conclusion that I don't want that. I want this to make me more patient, more understanding, more empathetic and sympathetic to people who are going through a similar thing or even something completely different. I want to be understanding and learn where I can and help where I can too. I want to be accountable for my actions. When I am being a bit grumpy, I want to rein it in and really look at the bigger picture. It hasn't been easy, but I would not even recognize the person that I was last year. I was angry and upset and I just felt as though I was the victim in everything. And that's changed recently. I wanna share with you guys a few things that have really helped me to reframe this and how I went from being somebody I'm not proud of at all to somebody 
I can actually say I am quite proud of in certain situations. Firstly, one of my favourite things to do now is bullet journaling. Oh my... <laughs> bullet journaling is now one of my favourite things to do, or journaling of any kind. I say bullet journaling really loosely. If you saw my bullet journal, those of you who actually bullet journal might have some sort of fit, because it's not... it's not very good. <laughs> So journaling in general has helped. It means I have an opportunity to write down fleeting thoughts of jealousy, upset, irrational fears. It means I have somewhere to externalize all of these thoughts without offloading them onto certain people. Sometimes things need to be said out loud. If you're upset because of something that's happened, you need to vocalize that, which brings me on to my next point. Communication is so, so, so important. Yes, I've started journaling and writing down certain thoughts that are in my head. If someone does something wrong and it upset you, it's valid and you should be able to talk to that person and tell them how you're feeling. If you just write it all down and that's it, nothing else, nothing's gonna get better. If somebody's doing something wrong that could be changed, you can communicate that. And this might seem like an easy thing to do, but it's not. It's, I found it really difficult. I didn't realize it was as easy as just being honest and telling somebody, actually, this thing upset me. Communication is massive. And that paired with a bullet journal where you can write down fleeting thoughts that might be irrational, along with the things that are rational, just helps you balance it out and make sensible and understanding decisions. Another thing that has changed in the last year is how I view myself. I had a scarily low self-worth. This manifested in loads of different ways. I won't go into detail about all of them in this video, but maybe in another one, I'll talk a bit more about my self-worth. But it came in forms of drinking a lot, not respecting my body or myself or my mind. I didn't feel I was worthy of this life I had. And now, I am learning to do that. I've practiced a lot of self-worth things, which has come with journaling too, about writing down things I'm grateful for. And a massive thing that has changed is my nutrition and how I look after my body. It's hard for me to admit, but I was eating around six, 700 calories a day because I was restricting myself massively. I mean, I was hardly eating. I didn't feel like I deserved fuel because why would I? And then in the past six months, I thought, why am I doing this to myself? Why, why? <laughs> if my friend came to me and said that this was happening to them, I'd ask them the same question. So recently I've learned a lot about nutrition and the value of staying hydrated. I love water. In fact, I might have to make a whole video on hydration because it's changed my life. That and a lot of other things. I feel like I finally fuel my body now and it's working. It makes my brain happier, my memory's better, I can stay awake for longer, I don't just want to crawl under the duvet and turn into a little burrito. Although some days I still want to do that just with food now. <laughs> so self-worth and self-love and nutrition is massive, massive. It also makes you less grumpy. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> I am a very argumentative person. I will argue my point. Sometimes I go past the point of I even know the point and the point is lost while I'm trying to make my point and win the point. That was a lot of points. I need to remember that the people I'm arguing with won't always be here. They, they won't be. They, one day I'm gonna look back and go, I wish I'd just stopped that argument and gave them a hug and a cuddle instead of going on about something really insignificant. So I got a new tattoo that says they are mortal, which just reminds me that when I am in a heated argument or a debate, some might say, that it's important to remember they are not always gonna be there. And some people might think it's unnecessary to have this visual cue, but I'm a really visual person and I do need it. And I think it has actually really helped. I see it all the time. And when I am arguing, I do glance at it and I get a sort of twinge in my chest. It's not the nicest feeling to be reminded about it, but it also grounds you and makes you realize this person who I love, who I'm arguing with, probably unnecessarily, isn't gonna be here. You're not guaranteed tomorrow and neither are they. So it just helps me remember that in the moment. Going on from being a visual person, art has helped me more than words can say. 
which is ironic for what I'm about to say. When I talk about art, I don't just mean painting, I also mean writing, anything visual, filming, anything. I am an artist and I can finally say that now. I have a website and I sell my art to people all over the world and every time I sell a print I do a little dance and it's a bit goofy but every time I sell a print it feels like it's solidifying the fact that I am now an artist and it feels so good because for a long time my art was something that was somewhat negative. I was able to put all my inner thoughts down on paper in a really ambiguous way. My paintings have a lot of deep meanings to them that probably I will only ever know and people interpret them differently and they help them too and I find that beautiful and it's really humbling and I'm just grateful for that. So art is another one that I will always hold dear. I'm naturally stubborn and passionate and over emotional. I feel like for a time I was breeding impatience in people because I was overreacting to things that really didn't warrant an overreaction. And just recently, because of all the things I've said in this video, I've gradually kind of chiseled back. And yeah, I'm still over emotional and I'm stubborn and all of those things. But instead now I'm looking at myself differently. I'm remembering that life's finite for a good reason. And I'm using things to help me become the person I can be proud of. Trauma and mental health does tend to make everything about you. That doesn't make you selfish or attention hungry. It just means you might need a little bit extra support. But that doesn't mean we should get into the habit of being the center of attention. We need to understand and hold ourselves accountable when we're maybe using it as a bit of an excuse. That isn't to say if you need support, you shouldn't get support. There is help out there and sometimes you can excuse yourself for how you're feeling. It might feel a bit overwhelming if you're haunted by the past but you can't control the person you were. You can only control the person you are now. Forgive yourself, forgive others, and learn to embrace life where you can. It's a good one, if you look at it. I know there's a lot of bad in the world and a lot is going on for a lot of people, but we have control over ourselves. And I like that thought, and I hope that I'm only gonna get better with time and a lot of energy because it doesn't happen overnight. Thank you so much again for listening to my little Becca waffle. I really hope you're all okay and please like and subscribe and comment. Let me know how you're all getting on and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Didn't drink a sip of tea that whole time. I am parched. Have a good day. Bye.